Welcome back to the Jones Zone, guys. I'm going to try to make this uh, quick if I can. In the previous video, I was uh, starting to get into uh, science and doing so in a biblical context. But uh, now I'm going to actually continue what I was talking about, which was this. And so there it is written. God will not condemn Israel until the heavens have been measured uh, which is not possible if we're literally talking about heaven because heaven is a spiritual realm that cannot be measured by the physical. But if we're talking about measuring the heavens as in the stars that are in this night sky, I mean, we can't do that either because the stars are so numerous, we cannot count them all. And even if we could, well, I don't think we'd be able to know their actual dimensions either. But science will have you believe that we do. You know, they'll be like, oh, yeah, there are this many stars in the universe and in the galaxy and uh, blah, 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 and give you a little estimate. And then they'll go into their theoretical models and all that. And you know what? So, yes, yeah, exactly what I said. You're going to have a very hard time trying to measure the stars. You know, when they do this, uh, these little theoretical models and stuff like that, it's like, dude, come on. I mean, yeah, it's in your theoretical model. But we're talking, we're not actually talking about theories. We're talking about actual reality and the exact numbers of stars, not estimates. And the same can be said about measuring the foundations of the earth. You know, what's under the plates? What's what's under the 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 sea floor? How thick is the earth's crust exactly? How many tunnels are there, you know, leading to certain, you know, specified locations or whatever it might be? What's the exact number of all the elements stored deep under the earth, every one of them. We're not talking about estimates or theoretical models here. What is the exact amount? And so I say to the minions of Satan, if you cannot ascertain these precise measurements, you cannot thwart the biblical prophecy from being fulfilled. Nope. No way. No how. Not as it is written. And you couldn't do it anyhow, because only God and the seraphim know these things. And last I checked, Satan was a cherubim cast of angel, not a seraphim. So God never revealed that sacred knowledge to him or any other angel that was cast out of heaven. And I can back this up with scripture too. So we'll use the new international version so everyone who speaks modern English can understand everything, right? I don't want to stick to outdated uh, forms of syntax and grammar. So uh, we'll, we'll go to Job chapter 38, verses 4 through 7, where it says that, starting with 4, Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid the cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. All right. So this means that the angels were created before the foundations of the earth. And when it says the morning stars sang, I don't actually think they mean... The stars were singing. Morning star appears to be a title that belonged to Satan uh, when he was Lucifer and before he was cast out of heaven. And as we know, Satan is a fallen angel. And uh, this is mentioned in Isaiah uh, chapter 14, uh, verse 12. How you have fallen from heaven, day star, son of the dawn. How you have been thrown down to earth, you who laid low the nation. Okay, so when we're talking about the knowledge that relates to the secrets of the earth, Satan may certainly know more than all the collective knowledge of man and what they have on the earth and the foundations of the earth for sure. But even if Satan does know these things, he would still have to be able to relay this information to humans in a way that they can actually understand it. Not only that, but humans would have to actually devise a way to physically measure the Earth. And there might be a way to technologically achieve this. Uh, some of you people who are in the conscious and the scientific community may know of a little organization called CERN, whose lab is in Geneva, 
where they have the largest Hadron Collider in the world. Now, some people think that the purpose for the Hadron Collider is to create portals or something like that, but its uses could actually be multifaceted, having application in teleportation to some degree. Uh, it could also have an application in quantum computing and even the development of particle beam weaponry. Uh, now, I'm a bit of a nerd, so I've read numerous articles on particles and subatomic forces and things like that. And I'll say that the teleportation would be the least feasible and most difficult of these technologies to master. And so, it'll probably stay, it will very likely, it will stay in the realm of science fiction for a time. But as quantum computing and, uh, you know, and, and particle beams and, and as for holograms and things like that, these things will become a reality that we'll see sometime in the future and uh, very likely within our lifetime. And despite all of that, I still don't think scientists are going to be able to ascertain uh, the measurements of the foundations of the Earth. Uh, and uh, why is that? Well, first you're going to need a world government because this will allow organizations to have access to more resources on the planet with which they'll be able to build and construct these robots and facilities and smart cities and so on. You know, uh, Now, as long as we don't have the world government, we don't get the super sci-fi reality we see in various movies and TV shows where robots are populating our cities and so on. Nope. Uh, I just can't see a massive project like this happening without some kind of global uh, effort being implemented. No, sir, no, ma'am. So, uh, good luck with trying to figure out the uh, measurements of the heavens and the foundations of the earth. And being able to do it all by the end of the century before the coming of the second coming of Christ. All right, well, uh, I'm going to close out now with uh, Lord. You deserve all the glory. And I am praising you for your unlimited power. Praise God and hallelujah. I said hallelujah, God. All right? Yeah, hallelujah. <laughs>